If you put yourself in abundance mindset, you just don't want anything else. And you can focus now on things that will move the needle, things that will put you in physical abundance so that you're translating the abundance in your head into the physical world. What is in the mind will translate into the physical world. And the more strongly you believe what is in here, the faster that will translate into your physical world. The more Delulu you are, but rooted in reality, you're already living in the future in your head, the faster that will translate into the physical world world. Hey bestie! Welcome to the Spoiled Girly Support Group Podcast, where we talk about how to get that bag while also securing your own bag. I'm your host Elle, and let's get into it. On today's episode, we are talking about money. Specifically, how to develop your discernment about personal finance advice, how you should not take out-of-touch personal finance advice from already rich people, and learn to read between the lines instead. We are also going to talk about how you are richer than you think. We have a lot to cover, so let's get into it. It. Mark Cuban went under fire for his video about lattes. You don't need that extra latte, that extra streaming subscription, going to that fancy dinner. You want to put that in a money market account, earning five, maybe more percent, and watch that sucker grow. That'll make you feel a whole lot better than that extra latte that you had that day. And someone stitched his video saying, You don't need that extra latte. Uh, no, I absolutely do. <laughs> Thank you. Billionaires will never understand what an iced coffee represents to the average American working a 9 to 5. So that's one example of a rich person giving out of touch financial advice on the internet. Here's another example from my personal favorite, Personal Finance Club. Before we get into this one, I just want to say I am a big fan of Personal Finance Club, PFC, especially on Instagram. Whenever someone I know asks me about personal finance, I direct them to that account. They post, I think, every day. And you just learn so much. No content creator is perfect and you're bound to release something that doesn't really resonate with a lot of your audience and this one I think is truly out of touch. They came out with this post about a $1,400 car and it says never borrow money for a car period. Basically it tells you to bike, bus, or walk to places instead of buying a car with a loan and instead save up your money and then buy a car using cash for $1,400 and then you basically roll it into like a greater value car down the line. But I'm like, maybe it works if you're in a very accessible city, you have a lot of infrastructure. I think it really works. But in a lot of places, a 20 minute car ride can turn into like an hour bus ride or an hour and a half. Here's some of the comments on that post. This is a very privileged post that forgets about accessibility, rising costs, and stagnant wages. $1,200 wouldn't buy me a riding lawnmower in my area. While I agree car loans are often predatory and can lead to people buying a more expensive car than they need, it also means safety and security for a lot of people. I don't encourage debt, but I understand it's necessary in our rigid economy. And then someone else said, millionaires should stop giving financial advice when they are out of touch with reality. A lot of personal finance advice, especially if you're a newbie, you have to realize that these things exist in a vacuum. Like in a perfect world, these are the things we would do, but we don't live in a perfect world. And each person's world is different. So there's no really one size fits all advice. There are core tenets, but that's it. So this advice, $1,400 car, if you can even find one in this market, this episode is basically to arm you with the tools of discernment to know when you should take someone's advice or when you shouldn't take advice. Basically, you listen to it, you read it, whatever, and then you look at your own life. Like, does it apply or is it not for you? And a lot of this personal finance advice tend to make a lot of people feel bad about themselves because the millionaires are telling me to skip my daily coffee, walk or bus around instead of getting a car loan that you could easily afford. Okay, no one is getting a thousand dollar car note if they can't afford it. You're gonna get whatever is in your price range. It's almost like a lot of the personal finance advice equates suffering to building wealth when it shouldn't be that way. Why do we have to feel like we are lacking or suffering when we are building wealth? Also, a lot of this personal finance advice comes from men. When you take personal finance advice from men, it doesn't apply. Not everything applies because they can do without a lot. Like, have you seen their apartments pre-girlfriend and then post-girlfriend? These men will do without. They will live by with the bare minimum. They will have underwear from when they were teenagers. They can and will go without for a long time. So if you're a woman and you're taking personal finance advice from people who can go without for a long, long time, 
it doesn't really apply. It's just not it. And it's not the vibes. A lot of the personal finance advice that I see is coming from a place of the more you suffer, the more you're going to make money. The thing is, we equate being rich to money alone. When being rich is a category that a lot of things factor into. You can be rich in so many other things and money is just one factor of that. Like money is amazing. Money eliminates a lot of stress that makes your experience of life less rich. That's what money does. And being financially rich is a choice that you make. Obviously, it doesn't apply to all in every situation. No nuance, Nelly. But if you're starting out by yourself, it is a choice that you make if you want to be rich. There are certain sacrifices you have to make in the very beginning. Yes, that's true. But overall, it is a choice. Your experience of life is not any less rich because you are materially not rich, if you get what I'm saying. Being rich is a mindset. It's abundance personified. I just wanted to let you know, Whenever you take personal finance advice from men, they're assuming that women feel the same way, that we can go without our cute little treats, that we can go by without physical manifestations of abundance. It's just not it. And I don't identify with the sentiment that money comes with suffering. It just doesn't. Well, it shouldn't. Back to the topic. Let's talk about these rich people giving financial advice. Bestie, you need to read between the lines. You need to be so good at reading between the lines, aka discernment. You need to be heavy in your discernment. What is left unsaid here is that the people who are giving you this advice that you should take away your little daily joys, that money is suffering, you need to read between the lines, okay? These people did not save their way to wealth. Why is no one talking about that? Like they're telling everyone else to save their money, but they didn't save their way to wealth. They didn't save their average wage and then became millionaires in their 30s. Mark Cuban, you know, him from Shark Tank, invests in a lot of businesses. He has all these things going on. Jeremy from Personal Finance Club, he sold a company in his 30s for $2 million. Now he's engaging in a very successful online business, teaching other people about personal finance. And one of the biggest personal finance creators on this platform, Graham Stephan, tells you to be frugal, this and that, which is very good. There's basis for it. He primarily was a YouTuber, content creator, and then invested in real estate and made more money that way. These people didn't save their way to wealth. So why do you think that if you skip your morning coffee, you don't take out your car loan, that you would be one of them. And that's what's implied, right? Like I'm a millionaire. I'm telling you all this advice. And if you do this, you'll be like me. But you're not reading between the lines. Obviously being frugal and smart with money helped their journey, but it is not saving every little penny, penny pinching their way, suffering that made them millionaires, that made them materially wealthy. They all engaged in some form of scalable business and are still engaging in scalable businesses. And that's what's being unsaid here. And I think because they are already successful, maybe in the beginning stages, they did have to suffer. They did have to skip a lot of luxury a lot of maybe necessities, but they did that knowing that they're building something, knowing that something's going to come out of it, that this isn't forever. But the people that they're giving this advice to, to skip the daily luxuries, skip the daily joys, a lot of the people that are reading this stuff, they are working their jobs, that they're going to work for a long, long time. So this advice of taking out the daily joys out of life, it doesn't apply. Skipping your morning coffee run, skipping your Starbucks, skipping your pumpkin spice latte, ice chai latte, whatever, Trenta black iced tea with brown sugar syrup, no water, add extra splash of oat milk will not help you buy a house. But finding a better job will or starting a scalable business will. And the thing is, a lot of people choose not to do those things because it's just not their path and that's valid. That's okay. A lot of people are not chasing wealth and that's okay. So to make yourself feel bad because some millionaire told you that you shouldn't get this, you shouldn't get that, you should take all the joys out of life because you're poor. I'm over it. Go get that latte, get the car loan, whatever adds to your experience of life, whatever makes you feel abundant, whatever makes you feel rich. Because whenever you feel like your experience of life is rich, is abundant, it puts you in abundance mindset. And abundance mindset helps you make better long-term decisions. It helps you move past the good for now decisions that tend to really penalize you in the long run. Obviously, you do this with discernment. So when your self-care has Habit is making you miserable, you buy a lot of stuff as retail therapy, and then your credit card bill makes you feel bad that, oh my god, I should have done that. You're actively harming your financial health. Obviously, you have to pull back a little. You got this. 
Okay, I believe in you. You're a self-aware girly and you have it handled. And here's the thing, stop letting people make you feel bad about yourself, your spending habits, just because they have more money than you when they're the ones profiting from your labor from which their businesses are scaled. Listen, I'm the farthest thing from being anti-capitalist, but we need to recognize that the labor of others is used to scale businesses, is used to scale the income production of certain individuals, the owners of production that's the system we live in and we're going to acknowledge it we're going to learn from it and we're going to work around it back to the topic stop letting rich people make you feel bad about your daily coffee okay go get it if it makes you feel happy go get it and let me grab about one more thing while we're here let's talk about debt a lot of personal finance gurus talk about debt as if it's the plague and you should like never touch it but debt is a very useful tool that a lot of rich people even the people telling you advice about debt they use it too and they don't even call it debt they call it leverage because that's what debt is debt is the leverage okay if you're a physics girly you know what i'm talking about basically you use debt as your leverage to you put a little effort here and then you get like a lot of results here that's what debt is okay a lot of people use debt and i think the conversations that we have around debt like a lot of people get anxiety about their debt and that's valid obviously but we need to have a positive relationship with debt and see it for what it is it is a tool so how rich people use debt as leverage is you figure out your interest rate and then how you make money off of that debt should be at a higher rate than the interest rate. And the difference between the rate that you make money and the interest rate that's your profit. If you are going to take on debt, what is the ROI on that debt? If you're going to take out a car loan, will it add to your life in so many more ways than if you didn't have that car loan? A lot of it too is not financial benefits. If you just want to make yourself feel good about something and it will really move the needle, go for it. We need to reframe the ways that we think around money, being scared of it and being wary of it. It's a tool. We need to like take away a lot of the emotions that we have around money. And especially if you've had a lot of financial financial insecurity in your past, it's hard because you literally have like a physical reaction to negative money situations. So I totally get it. It starts in the mind and then it'll influence your body later on. So I totally get it. One of the ways that has helped me move past like financial trauma and like having this physical reaction to negative money situations is reframing your mindset surrounding certain money issues, certain money concepts like debt. It is not a bad thing. It's a tool. People use it. People pay it off. And then if they need to get something done, they use it again. It's a tool. It is not the big bad evil that looms over our heads. A lot of people don't know much about it and that's why they're scared of it or they don't know a lot about it. They're not risk averse and they take on a lot of debt that doesn't really benefit them and they can't even pay back. That's also a different problem. So we need to know a lot about these things before we engage in it and really reframe in your head your relationships with money concepts because that will just make your existence so much less stressful. Enough with the not so fun parts of class. Let's get into how you are richer than you think. I don't want to blow smoke up your bum and tell you that you're rich for no reason, but we really are. When you think about it, we are so rich. In the past class, we talked about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how if you have fulfilled a lot of your base needs and you're only fulfilling maybe the second to the top category or the very top category, you are living your dream life. And I think the reason why a lot of us feel like we are not rich is because we are relational beings and I love social media. I love the ways that we have opened up our worlds to be more connected to each other, but it also opened up a lot of worlds for us that we didn't see before and a lot of worlds that have been normalized now. Like, why is everyone rich on social media? Because we are relational beings, we compare ourselves to the rich people on social media. We think that's normal. And if you're not that version type of rich, because there is a certain vision of rich on social media, you feel like you're behind and you feel like you're not rich. But if you have fulfilled a lot of the levels on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you are rich. I don't care what people say you are rich. Social media has really distorted our perception of the stratification of society. We think that everyone's rich and if we're not that version of rich then we feel bad about ourselves and 
we just need to quit all of that that's why i stopped consuming luxury corn and we talked about it in the past class that you should stop looking to people on social media people whose jobs it is to be the idealized version of you stop comparing yourself to these people and look instead to the people in your real life your cousins your siblings your co-workers your neighbors the people in your immediate vicinity is a more accurate representation of your peers social media people are not your peers watch that class if you missed it because that class is so foundational if you are taking the time to invest in yourself and watch this video you're richer than you think and you don't give yourself enough credit for that so pat yourself on the back and okay maybe you are not materially richer than you think but try to think it anyway and here's why there's this paradox that happens when you attract a lot of money into your life when all your needs and your reasonable wants are met when you feel financial peace you stop wanting things it's a paradox and you don't even have to be like materially rich to feel it but as long as you feel financial peace in your life you stop wanting things obviously this isn't everyone's experience but for a lot of women I know and me personally once you have everything in order you have achieved peace in your life and you have financial peace not necessarily a lot of money but just like peace surrounding what you already have you stop wanting things and at the lowest points in our lives when we're stressed out we don't like what's happening in our life we tend to engage in sabotaging practices we overspend we buy things to make ourselves feel good we use retail therapy instead of actually going to therapy when your life is not in order it may makes you want to consume things to instill a sense of order or you feel a void inside and you want to fill it with Amazon packages. Like, that's the vibe. By being Delulu and thinking that you're already richer than you are, it helps you achieve this financial peace in here. And because you settle everything in your life, you make life simpler, you just stop wanting things and you just feel rich. Like, when you start feeling rich in your head, you feel even richer because now you're like, I don't want anything. It was so weird getting to that point in life. You walk into a store and you're like, do I need anything? And if I need anything, you have very high standards for what you want now because you don't really need anything. So anything that comes into your life has to fit your life. Anything that comes into your life has to add value. It's just a thing that when you are settled in yourself, when you have achieved financial peace in here, and it just seeps into the rest of your life. It is so weird, and I'm excited for you to feel that. That's very different from a lot of personal finance advice that I see, and those types of money advice didn't really resonate with me because it just didn't feel good. Whatever you do, it has to feel truly good and is good for you, okay? Those two things, feels good and good for you, because there's feels good and not good for you, and there's good for you and doesn't feel good, but you can have both, okay? You can have your cake and eat it too. Long story short, there is a less painful, less stressful, less suffering, way to manifest abundance into your life it is not making yourself feel bad making yourself feel scarcity from the moment you wake up until you go to bed that's not what it is so whatever helps you get in that abundance mindset go for it if your morning coffee your morning latte walking into starbucks makes you feel rich do it because it puts you in abundance mindset like wow my life is great what am i gonna do to perpetuate this abundance into my life like you're just in a good headspace whenever you put yourself in abundance mindset you create financial peace in your head it just makes you want to consume less and create more if you create more than you consume then you profit that's what it really boils down to is if you put yourself in abundance mindset you just don't want anything else and you can focus now on things that will move the needle things that will put you in physical abundance so that you're translating the abundance in your head into the physical world what is in the mind will translate into the physical world and the more strongly you believe what is in here the faster that will translate into your physical world. The more Delulu you are, but rooted in reality, like you're still doing movements in your reality, you're already living in the future in your head, the faster that will translate into the physical world. And that's what manifesting is, a lot of things that we cannot explain, but it is also a lot of just basic logic and statistics and concrete good decision making recognizing that we humans we are not 100 rational beings we are so good at being chaotic we are so good at rationalizing the irrational and that's what makes us beautiful that is the beauty of humanity if we were all robots then what's the point instead of thinking that you are a robot you're supposed to do this this and this just because you need to hack your psychology to bring out the results that you want in life that's all i have for you today i just wanted to let you know that the secret to financial 
mental peace is thinking that you already have it, and that mindset will help you make good decisions to turn this financial peace into reality. Also, you are richer than you think. Now get that bag, bestie.